no uh, trust to Mr. Chair. Uh, Peter Paraone. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, thank you for the opportunity of being able to participate in this uh, part of the committee stage. Mr. Chair, I, I want to just talk specifically to section 51C, uh, where reference is made to the words participating owners. Now, we've often heard in leading up to this, this stage, the, from the time the bill has, uh, was um, introduced, right up to, uh, to, to uh, this evening, may, may I say, that uh, this bill is all about the retention of Māori land. And uh, can I say that when we talk about participating... Sorry, can the member give me the reference again? Pardon? Reference? Um, 51C. 51. Oh, 51. Thank you. 1C. Thank you. Participating owners. Now, that's fine for those who for those owners who participate. But they may be in the minority in terms of the overall ownership. And so what this suggests to me is that we have a minority group of that make up the participating owners making a decision on behalf of the rest of the owners. Most of them, well, they're not participating because they're not there or people don't know where, where, where they are. Or in fact, some of them may have even passed away. And so, Mr. Chairman, for, for me, that is a concern. And it's been a long-lasting uh, long concern even under the present uh, administration where the whereabouts of many owners are not known. Now, where they are not known then it seems to me very unfair for a small group that uh, the, the, uh, the system or the process knows know who they are or where their whereabouts, more importantly, making a decision for those who uh, may not be of their own making unaware of what is happening uh, to their land. And so they could end up having their land alienated by a small group uh, with, with possibly small shareholding. And that, I think, is, is an even uh, greater crime to having, uh, having that authority to make that decision by virtue of this particular section in, in the Act, uh, Mr Chairman. And I think that uh, that is an issue that has to be addressed, and it can only be addressed if people know where the owners are. Now, if they're not, their whereabouts is not known, then it seems to me very unfair uh, for, for them to have uh, the future of their land determined by that group of owners who happen to be known as to where they stay by the, uh, by the authorities. And so to have this, uh, um, this process managed by the proposed Maori Land Service, I think, is even uh, a greater insult to those, uh, to those shareholders. And as uh, we've heard often, our people are, are mobile people, and so people who are living offshore, for, for instance, or away from, from home, um, they can have the future of their, can I say, their legacy, which they would hope to leave to their children, being lost by, the, by virtue of the fact that they are not or not regarded as participating owners. So, Mr. Chairman, I, I hope that the Minister might be able to explain uh, how this will, in fact, prevent the sale of, uh, of, of Maori land. Um, as I go on to, uh, to the rest of that, uh, that uh, Clause, uh, Mr. Speaker, um, I don't have too much uh, difficulty with that, other than to support the comments made about those uh, shares that owners have decided to um, to retain within Fano Trust, because I think that uh, the notion of Fano Trust 
does have, have its merits because it prevents the, um, the downsizing, I think, of uh, the family's uh, shares. Oh, what a dilemma. Oh, Nanaya, the Honourable Nanaya Mahuta. Thank you, Mr Chair. I would have given the court, I would have given the court a mecca because she's a spokesperson, uh -huh. but anyway. Thank you, Mr Chair, for... <laughs> Thank you, Mr Chair, for letting me have... A